Hello, welcome to TV Taught Me, a channel dedicated to exploring the many writing and storytelling lessons that television has shared with audiences over the years. In this video, we will talk about the Apple TV Plus original series Ted Lasso and explain how it teaches us that villains can be one of the most lovable and endearing characters in a story if we know how to write them properly. The first season of Ted Lasso premiered on Apple's streaming service last August. Just a week after the release of the first three episodes, the series was renewed for a second season. By October, it was announced that a third season had already been ordered. Needless to say, the show was a hit, even winning an award for Best Comedy Series at the Writers Guild of America Awards. When asked about the unexpected popularity of the show, Ted Lasso's co-creator, Bill Lawrence, confessed that perhaps it's due to the current state of the world. We've reached a point in which it's nice to have some hope, optimism, and people who still believe that good characters, weakness to forgive, believing in each other, and being kind actually has merit and worth. And surely, this show shines for all those elements. In case you haven't watched Ted Lasso yet, the show follows the story of a lovable and very goofy American football coach who, despite not having any experience with soccer, is hired to coach AFC Richmond an English Premier League team. Even if Ted has no idea what he's doing, he always shows an almost childish enthusiasm and positive attitude which sort of reminded me of Paddington. Yes, you heard that right, Paddington, the cute Peruvian bear lost in London that inspired not only one, but two of my favorite movies. Of course, the show is in all rainbows and lollipops, as Ted Lasso has to face tough challenges during the series, such as the crumble of his marriage and a set of traps set by the show's main antagonist, Rebecca Welton, the new owner of AFC Richmond. However, unlike other shows or movies in which the villain is shown as a one-dimensional character whose sole purpose is to defeat the hero of the story, Ted Lasso chooses to present Rebecca under a more sympathetic light, which not only helps us to understand the motivations behind her actions, but also makes us fall in love with her. In this video, we'll take a look at Ted Lasso's treatment of its main villain to understand how the show's writers managed to create a more interesting and realistic antagonist that audiences can love and hate at the same time. Within the traditional narrative structures that have been used throughout history, the protagonist always has to face an obstacle that prevents them from reaching their goal. Although this obstacle can take many forms, one of the most established is the villain, a character who serves as a direct opposition to the hero and whose mission is to stop them from succeeding. Villains can have many faces, from despotic monarchs who long to rule a kingdom at all costs, to seductive femme fatales who lure both men and women to their doom, and even more nuanced figures whose evil deeds are disguised as acts of justice. Of course, there is one specific type of villain which audiences have been obsessing over in recent time, the redeemed villain. Nowadays, audiences don't only want to know what a character does, but also why they do it. With that simple principle in mind, we've seen the rise of epic stories such as Wicked, Joker, and Maleficent, in which the backstories of classical villains are revisited to show what makes a bad guy, well, a bad guy. Audiences crave to watch stories told from the villain's point of view. Even if Ted Lasso's main story doesn't revolve around the villain, one could argue that Rebecca, the show's main antagonist, has as much importance within the story as the show's hero. Because of this, we can't help but think of Rebecca as a second protagonist whose storyline reveals the motives behind her seemingly cruel intentions of having Ted Lasso fail as a coach and get the AFC Richmond team demoted. Let's analyze Rebecca's arc during the first season of Ted Lasso, as well as the narrative elements that the show's writers decided to incorporate into her story to understand how they succeeded in delivering a multi-dimensional villain that we both root for and disapprove of. Rebecca Welton is the very first character we're introduced to in Ted Lasso. 
She's the ex-wife of former AFC Richmond team owner, Rupert Mannion, who after years of cheating on her, finally leaves her for a younger woman. After getting full control of the soccer team thanks to her divorce settlement, Rebecca seeks to destroy it, as it's the only thing her ex-husband ever loved. To do so, she chooses to hire the least capable coach she can find, Ted Lasso. During the first episode of the series, we're introduced to the dynamic between Rebecca and Ted, despite being a lovable and innocent man who wishes nothing more than to share positivity and happiness with everyone around him, Ted becomes a pawn in Rebecca's master plan against her ex. She doesn't care who she has to sacrifice to get back at him. Surely, many people would turn against Rebecca for her despicable actions. However, throughout the first season of Ted Lasso, we can't help but fall in love with her. To do this, the writers of the show incorporated certain narrative elements into her storyline that helps us see the world through her eyes and experience her growth in each episode in a much more intimate way. But what are those elements? If villains are just acting out of pure cruelty, without any real motivation behind their actions, it's easy to see them only as a cartoon which we don't care for. To create a more interesting antagonist, it's important to provide at least an explanation of the thought process behind their actions. From the very first scenes of Ted Lasso, we're shown how cruelly Rebecca has been treated by her ex-husband, the press, and even the people who are now working for her. Sadly, we still live in a society where women are shamed for failing at love, being older, and assuming positions of power that are still considered exclusive for men. Rebecca perfectly embodies the receiving end of our misogynist culture. So even if she decides to hurt others in order to get back at those who hurt her, we still understand where she's coming from, and occasionally even root for her to get away with her plan. Villains tend to be depicted as either individuals in positions of power, holders of special skills which give them an edge over the hero, or both. In a way, this represents all of the obstacles that audiences face in their everyday life. That's why they root for the underdog, the common hero who's able to defeat every obstacle despite being in disadvantage. So when the villain finally falls, they don't feel sorry for them. Rebecca could have easily fallen under the almighty villain trope, being the sole owner of the AFC Richmond team and having the blind trust of everyone around her it would seem that there's nothing standing in her way. However, the constant humiliation she suffers either by the press or her ex-husband make us realize she's actually powerless. We slowly begin feeling empathy for her, even going as far as wishing she also gets a happy ending. We begin to realize she's not so different from us after all. Creating a lovable villain shouldn't mean that our stories have to lose any trace of good old-fashioned evilness, as this is still vital to find the perfect dramatic balance within our stories. Because of this, when making us fall in love with a villain, it's important that writers find a way to channel the audience's most visceral reactions to a different entity. It can be an unfair society, a cruel parent, a selfish friend, or in Rebecca's case, an asshole ex-husband who never misses a chance to attack Rebecca in subtle and hurtful ways. A hero should never be pure good, and a villain should definitely never be pure evil. Leaning towards either of these extremes usually ends up creating very simple characters without much to identify with. That's why providing certain character flaws in the case of heroes and redeeming qualities in the case of villains helps us see them as more sincere individuals with whom we can connect on a deeper level. As the series progresses, Rebecca is shown to be not only a scorned ex-wife seeking revenge, but also a good boss and eventually even a great friend. 
Once Rebecca realizes the hurt she's causing to others, she proves to be better than her ex-husband by coming clean and making amends in order to make things right. Finally, if you really want audiences to fall in love with your villain, make sure they get away with it, only to discover that victory didn't fulfill them in the way they were expecting. This way, we are reassured they underwent a meaningful change throughout the story, which almost makes us feel proud of them. Despite losing the last match of the season, having the team demoted and her ex-husband crushed, Rebecca doesn't enjoy achieving the goal she set during the beginning of the season. She does no longer position her success in the sorrow of her ex. She has transcended. Despite being technically the show's villain, she experiences her own personal hero's journey in which she had to defeat her own personal obstacles in order to obtain what she was seeking, her happiness. The first season ends with Rebecca telling Ted he will remain to be coach of the team for the next season, only this time they'll actually try to win the whole thing. So in a way, Rebecca has completed a full transformation and go from antagonist to upcoming hero. However, this doesn't mean that we won't have a lovable villain for season 2. As it appears that the show is getting ready for another big lesson in antagonist treatment with the character of Jamie Tart, the young and egocentric star of the team who played for Richmond alone before returning to Manchester City and who seeks to take Ted Lasso and his team down. Despite showing very little redeeming qualities during the first season of Ted Lasso, during one of the last scenes of the show, we see Jamie getting violently screamed at by his father for committing a mistake during the last match, giving us a sense of empathy for him. Of course, we we'll still have to wait for season 2 to see if the show's writers will use some of the other narrative elements they used for Rebecca to turn Jamie into the series' new lovable villain. There's no doubt that Ted Lasso is an amazing show that everyone who loves great comedy should watch at least once to learn a thing or two about good writing techniques, especially those that involve turning an antagonist into a lovable and endearing character using effective narrative elements like establishing their motivations, watching them fall from grace, giving them redeeming qualities, and having them change in a convincing way. So, what did Ted Lasso teach you? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, it would mean a lot. I'll keep publishing more content on what TV has taught me, so don't forget to click on that notification bell. Thanks for watching.